think. Yeah, they can test you. Um, they're leftist idealists, you know. Um, well, frankly, I think they're anarchists. <laughs> Actually, politics are, are um, complex. I was saying that the politics of the absurd, so it's difficult to explain. <laughs> Just been interviewed in a bath with um, a glass of champagne and talking about the reality of the marketplace is politics. It is politics. Factory is politics. Factory is politics in direct action. Mm. How you're doing what you want, what you believe in. Mm. This is beer, by the way. Factory is <laughs> so fucking cheap. What can I say? It's always important to... Uh destroy as many illusions as you create. Oh, yeah. <laughs> are you a capitalist? Yes. Yes, you are. Yes, it's, I mean, I, in the end, the money that factory makes is taken from surplus labour. I never really know what's going on. If you profit from surplus labour, then you're a capitalist, and I'm a capitalist. Although, actually, I don't make any money, so I suppose I'm not, but I function, I function to make, I function with a system that makes money through capitalist ends, yes. My next question, what occupation is down on your passport. Entrepreneur. entrepreneur. <laughs> oh, it's a bit pretentious. <laughs> <laughs> it's not the truth, is it? I'm very an entrepreneur, yes. I like this person wandering around who they can't understand. I mean, they can't, I mean, the, the word came out of LA that um, the Geffen organisation told Warner Brothers that you've got to be very careful with these people because uh, they're Marxists, which uh, I find very, very um, flattering, but very amusing that, that they don't know what to do. I mean, an L.A. record company executive does not, not know what to do with a Marxist or a Kipak Street hooligan like Greta. So I, I, I would rather go on confusing people for the next few years. You think everyone at Factory's loaded? Hmm? You think everybody at Factory's loaded? Uh, what, you mean on money? Um, <laughs> How much money? Put the camera on them. How much money have I made out of you lot? How much money have we made? I, I don't know. You've made, made, made money? We never get to see the books. We never see the account. Yeah, that's the thing. Is there a book? You, every deal, every deal. 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 Every very little. All I did was make a few records. Nothing, is it? Well, I don't know. Is it? But in a world of market forces, it doesn't mean a lot, does it? A world composed entirely of market forces, that is. So you're a lucky man, right? Yeah. Our, you know our policy, which was no advances, no contracts, you're completely free. You can go to another label yesterday. Mm. In fact, you probably tried yesterday, but here you are today because you didn't make it. So here we are again, fine. And we were here, you know, we yeah. don't mind, we yeah. don't mind. So we don't, we don't pay money. We don't give an advance. You, you get the money you earn from your records. When? Yeah, I, I know. When? It's just that that's difficult when to get you, sometimes. Certain ratios, certain it's difficult sometimes. I suppose eventually, maybe in a couple more years, I won't have any beefs about Factory at all because I won't care about whether we sell so many records or not. I won't give a shit, you know, because I'll, I'll be making a living or I'll be, you know, I'll be making enough to eat on in some other way. I got very fed up last year and um, mostly with musicians and with the um, struggle against the, um, against the forces of debt and um, when money got difficult. The first four years, money was dead easy, right? Because I'm very careful with money. And then your idiot manager started spending more of it than we had. And I got neurotic about that. And finally, musicians whining cracked my spirit for about three months. I'm back on form now. Here I am in the bath with you, Julian. Now tell me, right, as a record company, why did Factory diversify into clubs and video, etc.? Um... I think basically with that, I mean, there was, it, we, we had to, I and mean, there was... Lots of people had different ideas, and we had to think of ways of spending your money. Spending the money, so <laughs> we spent them on the ideas, yeah. I believe they've opened a club called uh, the Ponderosa. No, it's just like Hacienda. Okay. It's yet to be built. <laughs> I think it's uh, yeah, 
It's a good thing to open a club. I don't think the club is quite right yet. Why did you presume to think that you could fill a, a building of this size with just the groups that you like? I, I didn't. I never presumed. I Who's just... fault is it? It's, it's, um, it's mostly New Order's fault, really, in Gretton. I'm by by them entirely. As far as I was concerned, it just had a lot to do with my budgets, you know, which suddenly vanished down a hole in the ground called Hacienda. Is the club actually making a profit now? No. It's not making a profit. Not as yet, because there's a lot of it costs a lot of money to build a club like that. Why why do you think that's the opening this club? They got a lot of money they wanted to spend on something. But I think it's very nice of you to keep on subsidising all their money, losing operations. And you and the boys. Well, Great. Thank you. Uh, yeah, well, we've always it was either that or the RSPCA, really. <laughs> <laughs> Is it true that you only opened the Hacienda to further your career as a disc jockey? Um, it's a good question, that. No. Uh, I never really had a career as a disc jockey, anyway. and there's no back room. Yeah, that's, you think know, a club should be dark, a place where you can go and hide somewhere. I think there's got to be some sex and some threat. You think it's a good idea for a club to be owned by a record company? I, I would say that that depended on the record company. I think it's yeah. a good uh, thing that this club is owned by Factory, because Factory do have style and do have a very uh, distinct image and do, they do have style, yeah. I mean, I, th I should imagine if uh, K-Tel had opened the club, it would be a lot different. So, as a director of the Hacienda, do you think you could say that it's worked? The Hacienda's worked? Yeah. In some ways, the Hacienda's worked, yeah. As a director of the farm, do you think that's worked? Oh, yes. <laughs> the, the farm's worked uh, nearly as well as the Hacienda, in fact. That's how we get more people at the farm. <laughs> people should be more... And this goes for any, any, any record company and any band. It appalls me how passive people are. I think they should be more critical. And it, if people were more critical, it would improve things. What's the main criticism that people level at you? That we've made a lot of money. It's quite a miracle, really, I think. It's a miracle that we're still friends. It's a miracle I owe you £200,000 and you're, not, you're still in the back with me. Are you still getting away? I still get away. Listen, it's your fault. It's his fault from the bloody Hacienda. I tell you, go, I mean, the place is papered with bloody money. What can I tell you? What can I tell you? Not my idea. I want to know what happens to all this money. You ought to make loads of money and where, where does it go? Apart from well, your necks. The factory and us as well have um, put money into the Hacienda anyway, so provided somewhere else for Manchester. Yeah, a bad investment. A lot of people are very frightened of coming to the club and saying we want to put a project on. And that's part of the factory image that is probably destructive as opposed to positive. Do you ever make mistakes? Do I ever make mistakes? Very, very rarely. Very rarely, indeed. Ah! 